Uh, well, I mean, I'm from, you know, like kind of different part of the universe from uh, than you guys. Uh, I have some 20 years of background and experience in corporate finance. I've been CFO, you know, two different companies. I've been selling, buying, like IPOs. And, uh, well, well, a couple of years ago, I moved from Russia for uh, kind of obvious reasons to France. And then I thought, how should I entertain myself? And uh, well, I decided to, you know, to look around and see what happens in, in, in the AI. And uh, I started from scratch from Hello World a couple of years ago, um, as we all do, right? Mm -hmm. Quite kind of, quite a few things on Kegel, mostly in uh, medicine, like medical imaging, these kind of things, or medical sig uh, signals. Uh, I mean, again, just to, you know to try how things work and get some ideas. And then I came across uh, your competition. Uh, my motivation was to try transformers, sequences, this kind of you know uh, things. Just you know. Let's see how it works in practice rather than in the tutorial. Um, and uh, if we can just jump to the, so yeah, I mean that's that's kind of my background. If you have any questions up to a point, just feel free to. Will do. If at any point you have any questions, just feel free to interrupt me. I mean, let's make it a bit more, uh, you know, by-sided, iterative rather than you know walking through the presentation okay thank you thank you so i mean my idea was i mean it's a very limited space of real you know features and uh you know of something real which drives you know reactions and everything and from here i thought i mean what is the you know do you need like the like billion parameter model like the llama or gpt or something and mm -hmm. my answer was no, because the like the natural language has no rules, like almost no rules. Chemistry has rules, right? Mm -hmm. And the space of rules in chemistry is very you know narrow and limited. The space of you know rules or what we consider as rules in like natural language is you know that wide, right? It wouldn't fit the screen, so. And it was, I mean, the first step, I thought, I mean, I need something, you know, I need a kind of uh, very shallow model. And by the way, I mean, the model I use uh, here was like 150,000 parameters or something. Edition. It was great mm -hmm. because, I mean, it gave all the keys, even to, like, you know, guys from outside of the sector. You've been talking about yeah. what's the best representation, and uh, I mean, uh, I think the the the, I mean, that's the nature of AI. You don't want to, you know, to to be the smartest guy in the room. You don't want to, you know, to choose the best representation through the experiments, the manual ones. But you want to right. let the model learn the best one, right? And uh, the thing I did, I think, well, again, that's that's my just my guess. So what I tried from the store is not to, you know, pick the, you know, try like different fingerprints or, you know, this kind of like filters and the, the, that kind of filters. Well, instead I pick a really, you know, shallow structure and I've pre-trained it on the, you know, on the different kind of inputs. So I trained it to predict the like musket, musked uh, tokens. I mean, this classic one, right? I right. need to predict descriptors from Red Key. That I train it to predict uh, different kind of fingerprints. Okay. So I train it to, I mean, from a certain perspective, to have a very, you know, dense representation of the various aspects of the of the molecule right right and i you know um, uh, that was the most time consuming exercise i guess mm -hmm. and after doing that i mean i applied it to the uh, actual you know problem at uh, at hand yeah well i think you got a pretty good representation because you were you were 
pretty consistently towards the top, um, like with with whatever you were doing with that kind of stuff. So that was that was pretty cool to see. Um, when you did the tokenization, what kind of how did you break down the smiles into different um, tokens? Well, I first tried. Uh, I think we can jump to the next slide or uh, something. Uh, I mean, the next. Yep, here it is. Okay. Great. Well, first, I tried the character. I mean, the most you know basic one. Mm -hmm. uh, but and again, it was my first time. I was seeing uh, this smiles strings. Yep. I found some uh, some you know C and H you know letters familiar. All the rest was like uh, mind blowing. Um, and uh, I first tried um, just character uh, uh, based organization. Great. Well, then I tried uh, uh, triplets and uh, like two or three in a row uh, letters mm -hmm. and um uh, then i noticed this like square brackets around you know and read some stuff about the smiles and i guess well, i should meant something and i came across this ottoman smiles uh library yeah. i was trying to replicate it myself first um, but by the as it, it always happens in python i mean some smarter guys than you already <laughs> did this right? yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, i just picked this one and uh that's what i end up with uh, and uh, it was like very you know i end up with uh 40 plus tokens mm -hmm. and again and back to from uh back to the thing uh i start with it's quite a you know, narrow space, right? Um, and uh, it was uh, once I did that. I mean, actually, it was from the start. Mm -hmm. Once I did that, and uh, even the character-based tokenization is like forty something, like or thirty something. And I thought, I mean, uh, there's no reason to use uh, the models with uh, you know large embeddings, like. What, what, what's the idea to well again discount whatever i say but my idea was i mean what's the reason to use uh, like the models with the uh, embedding size of uh 500 700 plus if you deal with a right. uh, like uh with a uh, like uh space of uh like 30 40 something size i mean this, this i think this has been as close to consistent as we've seen any patterns in the results is it does seem that people with the the smaller embedding you know the smaller uh tokenization schemes you know the things that are like getting closer to just tokenizing single atoms like seems to do better than the like you know uh match pairing codings or or, or whatever well, I think mean, it's very reasonable, you know, because uh, I mean, the whole idea about, I mean, if you go to the basics and uh, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not too advanced, you know, person. So I always go to the basics. Yep. Uh, so if you go to the basics, uh, I mean, what's the idea of the embeddings? I mean, the idea of embeddings is to find similarities, right? Yeah. And the embeddings, they, uh, you know, they emerge from the world embeddings, like from, you know, from the, uh, from NLP. And the right. idea was to find, you know, to 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 project the large space, like, you know, dozens of thousands of words into the, like or hundreds of thousands into a smaller space. And if you right. have space of like forty-three, you know, atoms, what's the point of projecting it into the larger space? I mean, you 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 meant to find similarities between them. Yeah. I mean, if you want to, I mean, to do yeah. To, what, for, uh, once once you once you kind of group a token together. You can never ungroup it inside the model, so you've kind of destroyed the information. Yeah, kind of. I mean, that's a generalization they say, right? Yeah, kind of. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that was I mean, the reason I dropped, you know, the high-dimensional models. And um, frankly, I spent quite some time with a uh, uh, Zinc data set. Okay uh it was the last line um uh, yeah it's the last line in 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 on the slide um yeah again it was the first time i discovered it i mean it's like 
Sorry, so so you downloaded additional smiles? Yeah, from yeah. Zinc. I mean, uh, I spent a month or something. I I just downloaded the whole uh, Zinc uh, data set, like two billion uh, lines. Great. When the idea was, I mean, since you guys uh, uh, shared um, mostly the true azine, whatever it means, uh, yep. course, for the train uh, set, one of my um, ideas was to pre-train the model of the like general tasks on uh, on um, you know more diverse data set right with a likely non phrasing course and everything um no luck okay well maybe i mean again i think we need like some guys from chemistry to, to... So, so 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 you didn't end up using the the uh model trained on the zinc in the, in well, the final I tried, I tried to portray i mean uh, i tried it i tried to pre-train it on the larger set like incorporating the zinc but uh it yielded like worse results uh okay. than uh the no I and mean, the then the model portrayed on your data well likely because zinc is too different from what you guys did maybe yeah well, how did you deal? How did you deal with the dysprosium? Sorry, um, how did you deal with the dysprosium with the dy that we used to represent the the the, uh, uh, the DNA? Well, um, uh, uh, well, uh, well, first I, uh, I mean, uh, first I just uh, missed this piece of the data, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, all the information, and and I and I, and. I, and uh, I handled it as the one of the atoms, right? And uh, again, that's a benefit of being, you know, unfamiliar with the subject. <laughs> you yeah. do uh, strange things. Well, then uh, uh, I came across some posts and on the Kegel, and uh, and I recognized that uh, D D Y is the part of the periodic table. I mean, it's a different yeah. elements and i retrained the model with um, um replacing the uh, it with a uh, with a um, how you say it h is a hydrogen right a hydrogen yeah 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 and uh, no difference between those two options yeah. okay okay i mean it's not, not super surprising like like zinc is not gonna I'm, I'd be pretty surprised if there was any uh molecules and zinc that had a uh, dy no no they don't no, no, no. i was i was pre-training uh, like mlm part on, on zinc and you know these kind of things okay cool uh but uh, again i mean uh, it's i mean i think it's kind of obvious from the numbers if you guys have like like 40 like something unique uh, atoms and zinc has uh, like based on 40 something tokens right and zinc right. like uh, uh 10 times more uh, it just doesn't don't came together yeah but uh what i was wondering if um well again for training i think for training was the key yeah to you know relative success of this approach yeah. and uh, well if anything no no we, we we agree i think i think the um, I, I think this 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 is the about the right shape of the architecture we just think it's going to need more data to train yeah, I mean, keep it. I mean, keep it like, you know, keep it limited, right? Keep it small. Right. And, uh, I mean, the the uh, the. Uh, well, again, we'll we'll get there. I think that enough for uh, for uh, for this slide. I mean, if you have any questions here, and just go ahead. Uh, if you don't, we'll we'll just. Well, let's keep going. Okay. Uh, what's next, uh, uh, Elizabeth? Can you can you can you just yeah this that's something about i think we mostly covered it uh um look i mean again there's been like mlm parts there's been like uh smiles to fingerprints part and then i just locked mo most of the ways weights and uh and uh and uh, uh train the 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 model to predict affinity uh one uh i think the only important thing here well maybe two important things here is 
I used uh, uh, some public data for the first uh, for, for um, uh, to train the model. It's like the you see the link uh, right in the notes. Uh, it's uh, the SEH data set that uh, the Genx release. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's some like seven or nine million molecules. Uh, the reason I mean, I use them. Uh, they um, they have non-triazine cores, right? Which I I mean I thought is important to you know to 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 train the model to generalize some you know. Agreed. Uh, right. So 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 here like you're showing that you you did the mass loss uh, training on everything and then the ECFP like so so you're like you take in a masked version of the smiles and then you try to predict the uh the mass pieces right, right. for ecfps you take in the whole molecule and try to predict the ecfps or do you also mask during the the prediction uh the, the ecf ecfp prediction task well i mean i think the molecule and uh well first i train it uh i mean first i train mlm and then once yeah. the, i mean it's a pre-train i i took the full molecule and uh and uh um uh, i mean it's the same model uh model is just a different head right 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 Train it oh okay so so was the input so you trained it simultaneously with with a different head uh for the ecfps or or was it um like masked for the mass loss uh, prediction task and then unmasked for the ecfp prediction well, task? I, well, I mean I tried you know different strategies, and I still you know I'm not too accurate uh, data scientist to tell the truth. So I still uh, trying to recover the version which uh, you know. Uh, I mean, the successful one. But I mean, they're all been around, you know. Um, uh, um, uh, they've all been pretty much the same. So I mean, there's been uh, versions where I. Uh, with a like uh, single in input and uh, uh, two heads, so you just take the masked input, mm -hmm. have two heads, like one for uh, for the uh, okay. um, uh, for the smiles, and the second head for the ECFP, right? Great. There's been uh, there's been versions like uh, like step by step. I mean, I don't like step by step approach because you never know. I mean, which part of the weights you want to lock. Right. Right. I mean, it's kind of okay. Um, but I mean, uh, it's uh, kind of you know, same story, different day, if I may say so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I still struggle to understand what the CFP means. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, I tried. I tried quite uh, you know, some. Uh, I mean. I, it was arbitrary choice uh, to a certain extent. I mean, I, I mean, I've seen th this bunch of uh, fingerprints. As far as I understand, there's some kind of, you know, fixed position fingerprints, like uh, the uh, M A double C S, whatever it means, which predicts some, you know, features, right, of the molecule, and there's uh, where every position means something. Or like pop sham fingerprints, and I found those uh, not re really useful because I mean, the model learns them like you know, yeah. in a second. They're they're really easy to yeah, mem yeah. Use to memorize stuff. But I'm well, not sure with your uh, side. I mean, your data set only was huge, but it right. was uh, not too diverse, I guess. Yes. So I mean, yes, we we did. We didn't have that many unique building blocks, so that was definitely definitely an issue. Right, right. right. So I mean, it's kind of easy task for the for the mo uh, model, and uh, I mean, easy task do not give you any benefits, right? Uh, 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 um, so yeah, I mean, I tried some other stuff, but it was uh, too slow. I tried to have some. Uh, like three D fingerprints, or I mean, kind of, yeah, you know, which are inferred from the how you call them the three D representations uh, conformers, right? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, conformers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you generate your own conformers? Like they're they're a real pain to generate. 
Well, I've tried to generate like fingerprints uh, with uh, like three D fingerprints uh, from uh, Psychit uh, fingerprints. It was like too slow. Right. I mean, it was you know, slower than yep. light. Right. Yep. Yep. No, I was. I was. I was unsure if anyone was going to actually be able to generate all the conformers just because it was a lot of molecules. That would be a lot of work. So yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, so I end up with this uh, stuff. I think I, I tried some. Maybe I tried some other. I mean, like Ottoman pairs. I mean, kind of, you know. Yeah. No, this 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 makes a lot of sense. And uh, yeah, well, once once I had I mean this like for training stuff, I just uh, used the model to to predict affinity, uh, and that's it. So. Again, the, uh, what, what do we have next? Um, if we have, yeah, and, uh, and the validation. I mean, for the validation, I just I put aside a small percentage of unique blocks, and my yep. validation uh, um, uh, set uh, had uh, one, two, or three building blocks which were unseen by the uh, by the model during the training. Great. Um, right. Did you see? Was it that like was if you hold out just a single building block, was it easier than holding out two or three? Or was it really just dependent on what building block happened to be sampled? Look, I had that in mind, but I um, uh, look, I had no time to, to, to test it, but it's right. somewhere on my list. I think okay. you know the answer, right? Sorry, what? I think you know the answer. Well, uh, I have the suspicion, though, we don't actually have that many building blocks, so it's hard to really test. Well, I think on the, I think on the on the I mean it would uh, generalize more or less good uh, on uh, like uh, on a single unknown block and it will have a you know hard time uh, for uh, three unknown blocks. Right. Right. Yep. I mean, as as you said again uh, before. Uh, right. uh, what what's next? Do we have something left here? Right, I mean, I think we covered this. Well, I played a little bit with the different loss functions and everything, but it, again, it was uh, just, to, you know, I don't think it's really important here. Uh, yeah. I, I haven't tested, you know, but uh, I don't think it, can, uh, um, I mean. It yeah, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't heard of vocal, uh, vocal cross entropy before. So that that is something that we add to our list uh, to try. Which one? From here. Sorry. Uh, this, this, we hadn't heard of this focal cross entropy. Uh, focal, I mean, focal is uh, focal is uh, is easy. I mean, yeah. I mean uh, how it works um, uh, is um, um, well, assume you have a binary target, right? Like zero or right. one. Right. I mean, it's exactly your case. Yep. And uh, how it works? I mean, I I mean. I'll just send you the formula or the link to the TensorFlow uh, tutorials. Yeah. Uh, 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 how it works? It um, it uh, downweights uh, the uh, um, the items which are uh, close to the target. Yeah. Right. So if it's like the target is one, and you predict like. Um, uh, like zero point nine probability, right? It has significantly. I mean, it's not like twice. You know, uh, lower width than uh, lower width than the like zero point eight probability. I mean, it's like times lower weight. So it downweights right. the easy examples. Uh, yep. Constantly during the training, and it uh, you know gives higher loss. For uh, kind of you know hard examples, right? And I mean uh, hard and easy, they are not you know given by the. I mean it changes during the training, so the model kind of focuses more and more on the on the you know the res on the residual part. I mean it's folks from the from the Facebook I guess who came up with uh, this stuff a few years ago. Yeah, like five or seven years ago. Yep, we'll, we'll definitely check it out. It's, it's, a, it's a good idea. I mean, it was used for, I mean, it was originally used for imbalanced data set, data yeah. sets, which is your case. And uh, 
but even for the balanced ones it helps you to you know to constantly focus the model on the harder i mean on the residual part of you know yeah fully classified examples yeah that's great well i use cool. it kind of you know from time to time um other than that um i don't think anything helpful uh there we can move to the next one um yeah and uh yeah i think this is more important than all the so things that didn't work and uh look i mean i i think i spent like 90 percent of time on, on the things that did i mean that uh didn't turn to work good yeah or work at all uh i mentioned uh zinc data set but uh here i think if you guys i mean uh, i mean we can do it together if you want or uh like under any kind of nda or whatever or you can do it on your on your own side but uh, uh i think if you retrain the i mean this kind of model on the like unseen part of the data mm -hmm. i think it would generalize better than you mentioned today yeah because uh, I think the the again that's chemistry, right? I think the most important part is pre-training. It's not like the final stage of the training. Yeah. I mean, whether it whether it binds with the protein, a protein is not you know the how to say it. I mean, it's it's um well, I have a hard time to translate it from Russian into English and from like finance to chemistry, but uh what i'm trying to say is uh, i mean it's all about the kind of you know basic rules right which is chemistry yeah. is about right and pre-training is important because this right. is how the model learns these basic rules right so if you help it to learn you know basic rules with a uh, you know more diverse but still you know not like zinc with your data set right it's right. different but if you help it to learn it from the data you want it to use on, mm -hmm. then I guess it will uh, will uh, will deliver something. Okay. Yeah. No. We're we're definitely. This is actually something Max is going to start doing soon. Is uh, pre-training on all of our internal molecules plus the catalog that we order from. So there's a there's a group called Enamine that produces most of our molecules and they have a catalog of about 38 billion molecules. Right. And so that's that's the that's really the molecule space that we need to start generalizing into. So yeah, probably just pre-training into that catalog is probably yeah, because I mean uh, I think you, you still operate, you know, kind of you know a little segment of the the whole space. Yep. So maybe you yeah. end up with like so, so so let's let's talk about that. Like if um you know if you could wave a magic wand and and like just get any shaped data set for trying to solve this problem. What do you think it would need to look like? What, what, uh, you know, how big? What, what kind of diversity? What, what would you want to see in that data set? Well, actually, uh, uh, you need just the smile strings, right? Which mm -hmm. are build of the, I mean, which more or less, you know, uh, around the space you want to work with. Like for example, I mean, like there's a gold atom, right? Well, but but like we we include like you you uh, you had access to all the smile like all the smile strings for for the validation set, right? Like those weren't hidden, except um, those uh, except those uh, which are in the hidden right uh, uh, hidden uh, part of the. No, 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 no. They, they they were all in there. We just it just wasn't evaluating on them, right? Like that because um, because it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a competition where you run um where we like did any compute at the end it was all like you always did evaluation but we when we showed you the pre the the public results that was from the first 35 percent right but but it was also evaluating at that same time the the other 65 percent on the held out like kind of zero molecules so you mean the the small? I mean, uh, we we had the full set of the smiles and the test set, right? Yeah, yeah. It was all it was all 
Okay. All those miles were were the things that would be evaluated at the end. So if you were pre-training on those, you were pre-training on uh, kind of zero molecules. Not 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 very many. Certainly not the hundreds of millions right. uh, that we had from the other set, but they were there. Oh, okay, um, okay, 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 guys, guys. Well, I thought I mean you have some you know hidden you know proprietary set of uh, smile strings which you do not. Yeah. Uh, no, we, we we released them all, and just we didn't release uh, labels for them. So okay, okay. Uh, good. Well, then maybe I'm wrong, uh, but uh, well, no, I I think I think there is something there. I just think like it's going to take more. Like if you look at the number of building blocks that was in uh, AMA fourteen, it's like you know less than a thousand, right? Right. Usually, usually I don't bother training machine learning models on something less than a thousand. Right. So. You know, maybe maybe we just need to see more building blocks. Well, maybe right? maybe, we, maybe we need like five or six different libraries with different cores and different chemistries before we're going to start seeing these patterns. I, I'm not quite sure what what it is, but well, likely you need the uh, well, likely you need kind of you know um, uh, more or less balanced uh, you know number of uh, strings from the different uh, like triazine non triazine this kind of no right as uh here we have like uh, well i'm pretty sure the model is biased to the triazine you know right build uh molecules yeah um, no it, it definitely is like and we saw that right the the building held out building blocks right for the triazine core people actually did pretty decent on on those right like you know not nearly as well as as you do with building blocks you've seen before, but like, you know, there was some there was some amount of generalization um, for new building blocks. Like, now there's kind of an open question of like maybe maybe that was because this building block wasn't too far away from a building block that was in the training set. You know, some 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 open questions there, but uh, you know, it wasn't until we move out to these new libraries that like we start seeing drastically big drop offs in performance. So okay. Anyway. Well I mean the other you, yeah, yeah go ahead. Go ahead. Did you look at all into the protein itself as a way to get information? No, look, I'm from finance. I mean uh... that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair really fair I mean, well, well we, we guys from finance we have like like the left side and the right side and uh, i mean we'll call them debit and credit and, uh, and that's it you know <laughs> in a binary world uh, yeah uh, look i mean seriously i, I would i mean uh well i think it, i mean i well if i were capable to do that I think it. Uh, I mean, it should make sense because I mean, the protein itself is kind of you know, it's from chemistry, right? Right. I mean, it has kind of formula, and you can try to, well, yeah. theoretically, to generalize on that, uh, rather than uh, take it as the binary target. Right. But uh, too much for me. <laughs> No, that's fair. It's, it's too much for us too, right? Especially, especially when we only gave out three proteins, so it's probably not enough to actually train on. Right. So, I mean, the other thing that didn't deliver is um, is to try the fingerprints as the input. Okay. Because uh, uh, well, and I was pretty much uh, sure about it from the start. Uh, but uh, I mean, it was well. My 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 school of thought was: you always have some. You, know, you always have an origin, right? And you have some derivatives. Well, the origin is molecule. The origin is smiles, like fingerprints. Right. Whatever it is, is kind of you know, projection. It's a derivative from the from the you know from the from the uh, from the right. smile string. So I mean, if the if the like RD kit can you know can uh, uh, deliver you the fingerprint for given the smile string, mm -hmm. the neural network can, can do you know same job, kind of. Yeah, yeah. No, so, agreed there. 
so none of the fingerprints uh, you, I mean used to work good were in any multi input models which take smiles on fingerprints as inputs uh, I mean none of them outperformed the like the basic smiles uh, uh, input uh, uh, stuff well last two things as I said I mean high dimensional models work bad and I think that's I mean that's uh, I mean that's that's reasonable because I mean uh, you have a uh, like low dimensional space right and uh, and the last one is my favorite uh, I played quite some time with uh, I like your picture about this head and uh, and ears like the the core and the ears and uh, I mean uh, it was genius right and uh, I spent some time projecting ears onto the head or head onto the ears through the transformer or gated fusion or this kind of you know okay. so I was trying I had an idea maybe it would somehow replicate the chemical reaction or something yeah maybe it might make sense in which order right because you play around you know like you have like block one block two block three and then block three block two block one and those are right. like two different molecules and i thought maybe just maybe you can try to replicate the chemical reaction uh, through this kind of architectures mm -hmm. uh, but i still like this idea i mean uh, yeah it's interesting yeah we do wonder how much the chemistry actually plays plays a role in the data set I don't um, know. because like you know we know that we put those three building blocks in but we actually don't know that those three building blocks actually reacted together to form the final molecule so like we we, we kind of like have this idea that like we're getting like at least a 70 percent yield for each of those reactions but we don't have any guarantees about that so if, like, I, if i were you i would do this um uh, well maybe i'm wrong but um I think if I mean if for the look, I think there's a way to do, to 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 detect whether the smile string is uh, like uh, meaningless or not, right? I mean, okay. there's like routine to 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 know that through the like RD kit or something. So if I, I can give you the smile string and you will tell me, Victor, there's no such molecule in you know in uh, in the universe. It just they do not you know come together this way so right. maybe you can uh, that's again about pre-training and training the model to know the chemistry you might you know have um, you know different kinds of blocks and everything and train the model uh, model to predict uh, if they come together and which molecule uh, they deliver uh, at the end mm -hmm. and then uh, test whether it's real or not yeah right whether it works yeah. or not yeah we have a little bit of data for that but it is very tiny compared to the amount that we have for all the comp basically when we get a library made they will test uh each building block in one or two sample uh reactions and so it's you don't get every combination of building blocks you just get for each building block there's like two examples so we maybe have like do you have data for failed uh uh attempts yeah so so that's that's kind of what we use to like we we usually start out with a bigger list of building blocks we they run through these experiments and then they throw out anything that that got less than a 50 percent yield or something oh that's useful and go train the model to predict whether they will you know come yeah. together or not and yeah. what no I, I i think there's there's some good stuff there um whether or not the i haven't had great luck with the 2000 you know labels that we get from there but you know maybe as we collect more and more data of that type well look uh, if you have like 100 million uh, molecules that's you know uh i mean you have 100 uh, uh plus million of successful right uh, events right <laughs> how many uh unsuccessful events do you have Oh, um, well, 
yeah, but that did not. We, we don't. We don't know that. We don't know that all the combinations are successful. We just know that for each building block, there is one other building block that they've shown that it bound, or two other building blocks that they've shown that it bound. They, they don't do every. They don't give us every combination when they do those early uh, yield reactions. I'm sure so, they have it, right? No, they don't because they're very expensive. They have. They, they have to like do the reaction separately in its own separate vial, and then they have to feed it through a HPLC machine and then the mass spec to get that measurement out. So it's a, a very slow process. It, it actually takes like the months to do this part and then a couple of weeks to actually make the Dell with all the combinations. So, okay. um, yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah. at least yeah. like you're, but, but you're like non-canonical smiles closer in space gets at this like a little bit. Yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. Did you try? Did you look into smiles augmentation at all? Um. Well. Uh. Well, yes and no. Uh, okay. when the yes part, I was thinking of it. The no part is uh, I haven't used it except for the pre-training, uh, like uh, mask language uh, token uh, part. Okay. And the reason I haven't used it for 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 the for the binary affinity, you know, stage is uh, I mean, it's I mean, it's chemistry. I was I was afraid to destroy, you know, <laughs> that's important, fair. Important part of the of the of the of the data. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah, you fair. change, you know, just one uh, letter in the formula. It's completely different. Uh, that's true. So. There's this method though, where, so like, if you take a smile string and turn it into a molecule, right. um, you have some graph. And so the smiles is just representing a traversal through that graph, just a, a random walk through that graph. And you kind of write down each atom and bond as you pass it along with numbers to say where the branches went off to. So you, if you start at a different position on that graph and generate smiles from that new position, You'll get a completely different sequence of letters, but it will represent the same molecule. Well, I would try. I would try that. I mean, if I yeah, if I knew that's that's okay. the stars. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. It's just one of those things I'm wondering if people tried. So that, that's the benefit of being inside the industry, right? Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. No, no, I haven't used it, but I mean, again, if I if I knew that, uh, I would I, I would use that. Yeah. Cool. But I didn't. That's okay. Um, you still won. You still won. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's still, I mean, it still feels like a random, you know, black box, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, we were. It was definitely more random than we were hoping. But, uh, um, you know, yeah. It's hard to attribute uh, to your own efforts. I would say so. Yeah. I mean, um, our own, our own. Are, our own efforts are random too right now. So that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome to the club. Right. Yep, exactly. Uh, what else cool. we have here? Um, yeah, well, maybe, maybe. Um, there's been a whole line of discussion about the graph, uh, about the uh gnn right uh, graph right. Network works to to some kind of you know replicate the molecule structure in space uh well maybe it, I, I mean again i mean i still think it's all about pre-training rather yeah. than you know the 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 structure uh, if it's simple enough Right. But maybe I will try the three D. I mean, this uh, graph neural neural network structure, and again, portray it more or less the same way. Right. Just to see where it. I mean, whether it works better because I mean, whatever replicates the 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 fundamentals of the chemistry, I think, should work. You know, better. Right. Right. So maybe I mean next time. I would try this, or you guys try this. Uh, for the augmentations, uh, I'll just ignore it. I mean, I don't think. Well, the uh, gun is interesting part of the game, but I mean, too early for for this. 
I'm afraid. Yeah, uh, we agree. And um, I mentioned the gated fusion already, and I mean, the, any kind of training strategies that, uh, well, maybe I would pre-train the model next time. I mean, if I were, uh, if I had the data on on the successful uh, experiments, which result in uh, some kind of molecule, uh -huh. and uh, unsuccessful, where when right. you together building blocks and you don't, you know. Yeah. So my understanding there there is a open source data set available for that kind of thing. Uh, someone went out and scraped the U.S. patent literature right. um, to find like every molecule that had ever been patented and found the the uh, you know the the reactions that people use to do that. So so there is a data set out there for that. I don't know how good the negatives are. Yes, the negatives, the negatives. And also, you can you can put anything into a patent, and uh, I'm sure a lot of them are garbage. So we're never we're never even tried. We're never even tried. Well, maybe, maybe, just maybe, uh, you can do the reverse part, right? You, uh, you can take the molecule and uh, uh, you know and predict the reaction. Yeah, so this is that's called a retrosynthesis uh, prediction, right? And there, there's a bunch of people trying to do that. I haven't, I haven't seen them do a great job, but like, yeah, it's actually very valuable to pharma because basically a lot of times someone will design a molecule right. and they won't know how to make it, right? And so they do these like decomposition trees right. to like keep decomposing to smaller pieces until you can order all of the pieces on the leaf nodes uh and then you can go out and make your molecule okay. so i think there's a company uh what's, what's that company called that does this i mean it's postera postera um so the postera is definitely working on this problem well you see it's the benefit of being you know the newbie i mean yeah no 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 i invented it like it, a couple years ago right <laughs> yeah no I, i'm well no one solved it so you could still solve it right <laughs> uh yeah no i i it's a it's a really cool area of research, and people are trying to solve this stuff. Uh, you sh if you're interested in this, you should you should jump in and see if you can. Well, I mean, uh, the thing I mean, what I'm trying to make, I mean, whatever I mean, whatever strategy you use, I mean, you want, uh, I mean, you just, I mean, whatever it is, you just want to pre-train the model to, I mean, to 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 know the chemistry, right? So, whether you do it like this way or the reverse or whatever, it's just it's all around yeah. the same, you know, game. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Great. Well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for thanks for doing this. Thanks for presenting. Uh, congratulations. Congratulations. I yeah, hope you had fun, right? Oh yeah, we it was great. It was great fun to to share my pain with the world <laughs> <laughs> so and we got to we got to see lots of people trying lots of different stuff on our data which is very very really bad it's very gratifying so yeah oh. and we'll probably we'll probably release some other data someday soon like we're releasing the raw data that that we use to generate this data set so down to the raw counts from the control experiments and probably next probably month, next month test experiments so those will be coming out soon if you want to dive deeper into this um, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for the great work. Well, thank you guys. Have a good uh, day or uh, morning or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you too. Have a good evening. Good to meet you, Vector. Uh, take care. Thank you. Yep. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah.